Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with the tea drinking author who's got a cup of coffee today because it's that sort of weather. Hmm. Very nice too. Now, every now and again I discover something new which I find so interesting that I have to have a little chat about it. Today it's pocket pens. Yes, I know, it's not the sort of thing that you get all excited about, is it? Well, many years ago, I got hold of this, which is a Caveco Sport, but made out of aluminium, an AL Sport. And the great thing about Cavecos is they are really short when you put them in a pocket. Here's another one, a plastic one. They're very, very short. And so they will fit in a pocket remarkably easily. But the great thing is, when you post them, they suddenly become full-sized pens. Now, OK, they're not full-sized in the same way as, say, this is, which is considerably larger. But... It's a good size, and when you want something to just take with you daily for jotting down notes, one of these is really rather useful because it feels like a full-size pen in the hand, but as I say, you can carry it with you everywhere. Uh, not only are they very effective in terms of the way they work. If you get a plastic AL Sport like this, uh, a plastic Sport, then it is a very light pen. It's a very cost-effective pen. I mean, it's under £20. I think these are about 15 or 16 now. And that's really not outrageous. Conveniently, they also use either universal ink cartridges to fit in here, or you can buy little cartridge converters which will suck up ink and then release it as you write. So you can use any colour ink at all. So they're very convenient and practical when you go out and about. These have been my standout favourite pens for daily carrying around for about 20 odd years. And the design is considerably older because the design for these is about 100 years old now. But the other day, someone sent me a box. And this, I think, is now my favorite. So let's have a look at it. So what was sent to me this week? Well, it came from a company called Tom's Studio. Now, I heard of this company fairly recently. I saw an advert and I thought, that sounds interesting. It's a little company based in Dorset with a gentleman who is fascinated by many of the same things as me. His wife's a keen calligrapher, I believe. And some time ago, they got fed up with having loads and loads of disposable pens which used a fibre tip or a brush nib or whatever they might use, which all had to be thrown away. And so Tom decided that he would dis design his own pens that would be better. And so he's got here, as a little thank you for choosing Tom's studio, I've included some lovely Dorset tea. Ooh where my studio is based. So first things first, I suggest put the kettle on, grab a favourite mug and make a lovely cuppa while getting lost in a creative project, illustrating or just doodling for the fun of it. Have fun and if you feel like sharing your creations, go to uh, tag at Tom's studio. I'd love to see what you make. On the back, I think this is rather nice. It shows that this is a young company that cares. Earth friendly packaging. So, paper and cardboard. Our paper and cardboard is from an FSC certified source. 
is from FSC certified sources and we sometimes reuse our boxes to further reduce our environmental footprint. Good. It says, please reuse compost. 35% of the electricity used to make it is produced from renewable sources, which is nice. And so you've got this very artistic card cover, which is nice. And on the outside, it has this. It says, small but mighty, I set out to create a sleek, pocketable pen that feels amazing to write with. After a lot of trial and error, this is the one, etc. And then it tells you what's included. So, let's get on with it. Tom Studio, really nice box, cardboard, very well made, very well designed. Inside, a nice, simple bit of packaging. Let's take it out. First of all, there is a fountain pen. Second, there is a refill syringe. And then you've got this wrapper. And inside the wrapper, there are all sorts of nice things. I love forests. The first pen I ever made. And all sorts. There's also an ink cartridge. So, this is clearly a pen that can use a universal ink cartridge. That's good. That's nice. That's rather like the Caveco. Where did I put it? Here we go. Now look at this. These are sports, so they're identical in dimensions, posted or unposted. So I'm just going to use the aluminium one because it's metal and it's therefore equivalent to this Tom Studio metal pen. So you'll see there that in fact the Tom Studio pen is slightly smaller. It's not tiny, but it is shorter than a Caveco by about a centimetre, I would say. So far, so good. How big is it when you put it together? Well, if we get the Caveco out, it is a good size. Let's get the Tom Studio out. It is a great deal longer and fatter in dimensions. Now, the Caveco is really convenient, is very handy, is very good. It's ideal for taking out in your pocket and jotting down notes when you just want to get something out and ready. It takes a little bit of time to unscrew it and then you've got to post it, but that's all right. With this, however, it's actually held in place with two O-rings, that's all. So when you take it out, that's it, you're ready to write. But that's not all. Right, let's give you a full description of this, then I'll tell you what I really like about it. First of all, it has a good, I think, hexagonal. Let's just see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octagonal, even. Main section. It comes in various colours. You can get it all black. You can get it in silver with different colours at the top, dark green, all sorts of colours, all I find very appealing. This, I must admit, I just love. I think it's great. The sides of the extension bit, extend, I'm calling it an extender, it's a bit like a pencil extender in the way you use it, but that's because I don't normally post pens. The posting, the cap, the extender, whatever you want to call it, is a good size. It feels solid in the hand. The actual pen system is a very pleasant fatness. It's a good size larger than the Caveco and it feels really good. It's also, although it's aluminium or something, it has a series of ridges that have been machined into it. So it's not slippery at all. It feels really solid when you grip it. It's got a slight taper down towards the nib. 
it's uh, I should have said it's all aluminium I think so it's light enough but still has a certain mass to it it feels good now I've got to talk about this nib because it is lovely to use now I have a number of different types of nib I have Cavecos with their stainless steel nibs I have cross pens with gold nibs I have Viscontis with palladium nibs but one thing I've never tried is titanium and this I believe is a titanium flexible nib I would love to be able to confirm that absolutely precisely but there's nothing actually on this nib to say what it's made from the only thing I would say is that when you use it it has a huge amount of flexion now Tom Studio do two main types of flexible nib one is a fully flex nib and one is a sort of semi flex nib I think it's how it's described they also have all the standard fine medium and other types of nib as well as an architect's grind which I find interesting it's sort of the reverse of a stub with a stub such as with my 1.1 stub Twisby you get very fine horizontal lines and very fat downward strokes which gives you a nice amount of variation when you're writing with an architect's grind it goes the other way it's been ground so when you do sideways movements of your nib you get very fat lines when you go vertically down you get very thin lines no idea why architects are like that but I must ask my daughter sometimes she's an architect now so that's all well and good very nice as I said before it comes with two interesting things one is it comes with an ink cartridge so although you can't see it there I shouldn't think it will take a standard universal ink cartridge rammed in there and it'll start writing immediately which is very appealing because as we will all know standard universal ink cartridges are convenient they're everywhere and if you're out and about and your pen runs out of ink just being able to shove a standard universal ink cartridge international is very very useful but it's also quite small and if you're writing something for quite a lengthy period you want something that has more capacity really don't you now one of the difficulties with a Coveco is that you can get cartridge converters but as you can see they hold less ink than a standard universal ink cartridge just to demonstrate you can see how much more ink is whoops put these down and then I can show you slightly more easily so you can see here that the ink in the cartridge goes all the way down to here the ink in the converter only goes to the bottom of the silver line that's where the piston goes there's the piston so in terms of capacity it's always been a problem with the Coveco if you wanted to use these with a fair amount of ink there was only one route to go down which was if you wanted to you could fill the whole of that barrel with ink and then pretend that it's a massive cartridge and a lot of people use Covecos in exactly that way I know of quite a lot I also know of quite a lot of people who have tried it, like me, and got ink everywhere because they're not designed to be eyedropper pens. Guess what? This is. So you take this apart, you fill the whole of that aluminium barrel there with ink, screw the top back on and you're ready to go now how do you actually show this sort of thing working well I've hit upon a brilliant idea which is I'm going to fill it with some ink and show you and how do you fill it well 
those nice chaps at Tom Studio have sent, because it's included with each of their pens, they have sent me a little automatic syringe. Simple design, you drop it into your ink, push and release, and it sucks ink into that little piston cylinder there. So the question is, what sort of ink to use? I happen to have some ink here which I've hardly used at all, some Tsuyukusa from Hiroshizuku. So I might as well use that. It's sitting here doing nothing on my desk, after all. Not my favourite ink. I find it's a little bit boring, to be honest. It's just a blue, which is fine if you're in the mood for a blue, but I'm not always. So, press the plunger down, stick it into the ink, release it, and it sucks up a load of ink. I'm going to lose ink all over my floor any second now, I can tell. It's one of those days. OK, so I've squirted that in. I'll get some more. Squirted in. I'll get a last load. It takes a lot of ink, this thing. There we go. That'll do me. Don't need more than that. I've now managed to get ink all over my thumb. One of my demonstrations of filling a pen without ink all over the place really would be quite sad, wouldn't it? So, I will now put the cap on. That's about half full, I'd say. So really, lots and lots of ink capacity in this. And that is now ready to be used. I'm going to put these things out of the way slightly so I don't make any more mess than I already have. And so, one thing I would say is, on Tom's studio, he recommends that you spread a little bit of silicon grease along the threads, just to make sure you don't get an inky embarrassment when it all leaks out. I've got some silicon grease, which I bought from Cult Pens a while ago, and it's nice to be able to use it. So, there is one pen full of ink. Now I need some paper. And so... Here we are with a writing sample. Let's see how it goes. My first experience with a titanium nib. It's got good flex, excellent line variation. Whoops. What's happening with these is if I have the nib slightly askew, then I get slight gaps. As you can see, if I'm doing it quickly, that's, I believe, called rail tracking or train lining. But if you have it turned correctly, and don't try to do things too quickly. This nib is quite frankly incredible. Look at the variation that you get between no pressure, increasing pressure. Ideal for calligraphy. But you need to take more care than I usually do. <coughs> Thank you. 
I need to have some more practice with this. But this is a pen that I'm going to be using a lot, especially since it's such a neat little package. Not only does it look glorious, it's also really rather tactile. It just feels good in the hand. I think this is going to get scratched and damaged and chipped and really sadly affected in its life with me. And I think that's going to add to the look and the appearance of it personally. It's not often, not many pens you want to see scratched and damaged, but some pens, and especially the ones I take out all day every day, sort of deserve it. I should just say that the etching that goes all the way around the barrel of the pen extends to the top section here, which makes it a lot easier to pull it out. But just look at that. I mean, into as a piece of design, it's beautiful. As a functional writing tool, it is superb. And for me, the fact that this particular model has a flexible titanium nib makes it all the more appealing. I'm going to be interested to see how that nib changes over time, whether it gets more flexible, whether the ink flow improves slightly, because it has got railroading. OK, I, I honestly don't care about that because that's just the way that I write makes it do that. But in general, I have to say, Tom Studio, thanks very much for sending this through. And I am absolutely staggered and quite besotted with it now. So it's going away back in my pocket and it's going to be used extensively. And now I should just say, thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel on Patreon and the ones who have bought me a coffee and the ones who are very, very generous and do all the other things. If you want to support the channel, please like it and subscribe and hit the bell button, all that good stuff. But um, I have to just admit that today has been quite difficult. This is Wednesday. The video goes out tomorrow, Thursday. Yesterday, Tuesday, I spent the entire day in a car, eight hours or so driving up to meet someone who has just joined our family. So for those of you who are affected by near terminal cuteness, here is our little puppy just for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks very much for your support. Take care. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>